Thank you again for giving us uh, this audience. Uh, my name is Zahai Manuel. I'm a journalist from EGH. And we welcome you uh, to this interview. And we thank you for you know, finding us the time. So we are going to discuss about uh, different issues, but particularly regarding the relationship between Israel and Rwanda. And starting with uh, your appointment, you are the first ambassador of Israel to Rwanda. We would like to know, since your uh, appointment mm -hmm. in 2018, how has the relationship between Rwanda and Israel improved uh, in, uh, in different sectors? Well, um, it's of course a broad question. Uh, just saying before that, that I've been, I've been here since 1st of uh, April 2019. And uh, before that I've been doing many, um, uh, I've been working with the UN for many years and uh, I always wanted to finally be in Africa because my heart was always in Africa but not physically I was never here so it's a it's a wonderful opportunity for me to be in Africa uh, and to be in such a unique place in Africa so it's a it's a good start uh, the best I would say and I'm not sure that um, it, it can be can get better um, than what I have now is this post as ambassador here. So I remember the first ambassador and um, um, it's been um, very hectic, two, uh, two and a half years. Uh, the relations didn't start uh, when I came, of course. Uh, the relations were good before. Uh, there were exchange of visits, uh, head of states and some ministers. Um, however, the relations were mainly focused on uh, defense issues. Um, and uh, what I did, I, of course, in, um, enlarged the scope of uh, relations in two civilian uh, um, sectors, and uh, we can talk about that. But, may, but I can say that it's uh, not the same thing as it was when I came. And um, ev not everything is because of me, of course, it's because I'm here. And uh, there is a movement, you know. Um, Flights began uh, immediately, like a bit b after my, my arrival, and flights were the were the president's uh, uh, vision that if you have flights, then you have interaction, then you have trade, you have people, business people come and go, and tourists, and they talk about Rwanda, and they come again, and it it develops to uh, <coughs> a new magnitude of relations, which was true. And uh, many tourists came a lot. The first time ever they heard about Rwanda as a, as, a, as a destination, and it makes the difference because many of them are businessmen and they will come and they they came again to do business. So it's it's a it it was really a, a good beginning. And um, then of course came COVID, and one and a half years of these two and a half years were um, were a bit more slow, I would say, uh, mainly in the sense of. Um, our program of capacity building that we have uh, is, the, is the crown of a jewel, or jewel on the crown of the Israeli activity in the world. Uh, and this stopped, unfortunately. And everything went back, went to the, to the virtual world. Um, but still, still businessmen came, they found a way to come, and um, some tourists here and there, there was a window of opportunity in, uh, in November 2020, December where a um, few hundreds of tourists came, 500 of them, and uh, they left here $1.2 million. And I'm very proud of that because it was really my, my initiative and my uh, push to, for that to happen. So, uh, of course, there are other sectors which we can mention, of course, agriculture and, and water management, education, health, all these issues that we do since. Uh, I'm here, uh, Pandemia was here, and I was very helpful in even bringing him some vaccines here, in the, I was the first to bring any um, from Israel. And, um, and since then we are trying to bring PPEs and uh, soon, soon I could say that uh, we are going to bring uh, 55 beds for hospitals that will make a difference for hospitals here. So the pandemic made the difference, we didn't plan it, but uh, the relations uh, on health, on public health really deepened both in capacity building, doctors are coming here, they teach, and also on uh, an equipment. So, 
And then come, of course, the rest of the issues which we can talk about. But in, in principle, it started uh, very nice, it grows, and uh, the fact that there is an embassy here must help. Yeah. Uh, you talked about uh, different issues which we're going to kind of tackle one by one, starting with the Randeya going to Tel Aviv. How has that fright actually deepened the relationship? You mentioned the tourism. We know there has been some discussion with RIDB to kind of improve tourism. So if you can elaborate further, how did Randeya, uh, you know, improve the relationship in terms of tourism? Yes, and it's of course a matter of RDB and the, the tourism sector here. Um, in order for Israelis to come, there is still a need for change of branding um, of Rwanda in Israel. It's, it, it, it is relevant to the whole world, but uh, still many, many Israelis don't know anything about Rwanda except genocide. And of course, this must be changed. And it is a sign of rebranding a country. Um, so visit Rwanda on the shoulders of players is not enough. Um, there is a need for open a, a, an office in Israel, and the office should promote tourism to Rwanda in Hebrew. And this is the matter that is is now starting. I, I'm not sure where it is, but this should be done very intensely. The discussions um, are taking place of opening up that. And, um, yeah, I mean there is a company now which was chosen after a long time of wait. Um, but yes, it is there now and it should work and there should be instructions from here. And the embassy in Israel should be also involved, the Rwandan embassy. There is a new ambassador whom I meet frequently before he leaves and uh, we are uh, coordinated on this. He knows exactly what needs to be done. And um, yeah, that is tourism. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about agriculture. And of course, sorry, of course, there should be tourists from here to go to Israel. Yeah. Uh, but Israel is still closed for tourists. Is uh, We lost one and a half years on tourism. Um, usually uh, every year we have about four million tourists. And uh, we didn't have even one this year, so for one and a half years. But we expect to open soon. Mm. Yes. Uh, about yeah. agriculture, uh, f since 2012, Rwanda sends the students to learn about agriculture. It's kind of surprising first because Israel is located in a desert. Rwanda has Arab Rwanda, but it happens that Israel, you know, teaches Rwanda, you know, agriculture. So, firstly, if you can elaborate a little bit how Israel became so good in agriculture and what actually this partnership is helping, you know, Rwanda and uh, you know, in terms of developing its own agriculture sector. Yes, look, we developed um, from the ashes, like here. Uh, it took time. When we were 20 years old, and I calculate Rwanda now is about 20 years old, to, to be very practical, it's, I would say since 91, and it's 2001 that you exist really as an organized country. Um, you're 20 years old. In, we were 20 years old, it was 1968, and it was still slow. So. Um, but we already had our uh, agency for international cooperation and we did go to the world um, to help and in, in the sense of sharing experience of our first 10 years. So our, our agency established in 1958 when we were 10 years old. At that time we allocated 1% of our budget to the ODA, one whole percent, which is now, you know, the, the world is talking about 0.7. Uh, now we are much less than one, we are actually 0 0.1, but that is because of different issues. Uh, anyway, in 1958 we started our agency and we, 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 uh, put, uh, we put have emphasis on two sectors, empowerment of women, which is called today gender, but it was then the name, and uh, agriculture, and we shared our experience. So we, we, uh, our agriculture did not start in 48. Uh, our agriculture started in the 20s when we, we knew that since, okay, it's not only desert, desert is only one third of our area, the rest is more green. We have, uh, but we have an average of 500 milliliter uh, of rain a day, uh, a year, whereas here I think it's like 2,000 or more. Um, Yes, that is true, but we, are, we were more developed already when we were established as a state. And um, 
yeah, and now Rwanda needs to, and also it's a matter of money and of resources. You need to modernize the agriculture, you need more tractors, you need more, I mean, even, even, um, you, you can even do more with the tools that you do have as a farmer um, somewhere in the periphery, somewhere in a village. Uh, you have a small piece of land and you have your tools and you can do more with your small piece of land and that's what we try to help here, to share our experience of how to do it in a more efficient way, how to utilize your land in a more efficient way. That's our, uh, that's our emphasis here, and uh, yes, and we send 200 uh, students a year. The process of selecting them for this year um, is, is now going on. It's actually, um, the, post, the, the part of uh, interviews is, is over. There were about uh, 2,500 candidates. The shortlist was about 750, and now the 200 were le selected. And they will spend 11 months in Israel gaining skills and knowledge. They will work with Israeli farmers every day, except one day a week. And at that day, they will go and, and study in a college. And they come back with money, with skills and knowledge. And they, uh, they are doing very well when they come back. Yeah. So we are very proud of this program. Mm -hmm. You do follow up to those who actually come back? And yes, mm -hmm. we meet them, try to help, some projects, whatever we can do. Mm. But they are lucky, they should go to the... We should help others. Mm. Yeah, I know. Uh, and, and about the technology, Israel and Rwanda has been really cooperating a lot in terms of technology. Uh, you recently launched uh, uh, an Israel-funded STEAM center in the University of Rwanda. Uh, can you tell us what do you expect from that? So it is mainly the STEM centers that we are going to establish here. We established one already in, in uh, KIST. Uh, we are going to establish two very soon in Rukara, the, the School of Teachers, and in uh, Uengeri Ines, uh, which is the second best university in Rwanda. And uh, then we have uh, the fourth one in Yamasheke. Uh, and this, um, these four was the first, first wave or first part of our plan here. And the second is going to be next year for four more STEM centers. So, this is more a message than, than Israeli technology. The, the, we establish uh, STEM centers, which are computers and uh, electronic center and robot and uh, some 3D printer and so, so on. Um, this, is a, um, this is a project of STEM USA, uh, which is uh, an Israeli and Jewish donor, I would say, uh, with the help of an Israeli NGO. And uh, it's, it's a, it's a, co co a cooperation between me and, and them. Um, but of course, Israeli technology and the Israeli ICT and the innovation is, is in Israel. We are planning to bring experts. We are planning to send. Now it's my plan to, in the end of October, uh, to send uh, about 20 to 22, 25 uh, young entrepreneurs who are dealing with an innovation. They are part of the Rwandan innovation ecosystem, mainly in ICT, but also other issues like um, agriculture and health and education and fintech. So there is a group of young entrepreneurs who will come here, who will go to Israel and have a course of Mashav for 10 days uh, in the end of October. So uh, we have a list, but of course we are still open to other candidates. Uh, it's going to be a big, a big um, um, contribution to the mindset of those people who will go there and see what we achieved in innovation. Yes, mm. and uh, Randa has, has been chosen to host the CyberTech a summit which usually took place in Israel. Randa will host it at the end of this year. So why did you choose Rwanda? What has the summit expected to solve in terms of you know, global cyber security issues? Yes, so it was supposed to be in April 2020. Um, I chased personally the organizers uh, to come here. They are very good friends of mine. Uh, they have this event in Tel Aviv, which is the biggest, second biggest in the world, 
on cyber, but then also some other places in the world. They never, they were never in Africa, so I called them to come to Rwanda because it's because it's a unique place uh, in the sense of um, in many senses. But for example, doing business, registering business, in the sense of being hub of. Uh, uh, hub of uh, or the the vision to be hub of innovation and ICT. Uh, there is a it's a connected place in principle. You have internet in in principle all over the country. You have a good coverage of also in principle good coverage of uh, phone uh, and 4G. So it's 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 organized ICT wise uh, for sure. They did a very good job. So um, and threats are here. In, in cyber security, and it doesn't mean only border protection, it means all, all the facilities that are national, that are as, as a national bank or as a new airport or whatever you can choose, uh, needs to be protected. And I think it's a good place mm. to start this event in Africa. Mm. So Israel is planning to build a hospital in Rwanda. So we would like to know, I mean, what's the plan for that? What will the hospital be treating specifically? It's not a hospital that is being by, built by Israel. Israel is not building hospitals around the world. There are, uh, uh, there are uh, investors uh, who want to make a difference here. They are from Israel. They are private sector. Our private sector is completely independent. Of course, I can invite them, I can connect them, that's what I do. But it's not the Israelis building a hospital. Yeah. Uh, so they will come in the first, in the first phase, they are, this specific person is play, planning, yes, to build a hospital of 100 beds or so, I think 100 or 120 maybe, which is good. I don't know, it's the decision of the Ministry of Health. What will it serve? Is it going to be COVID or other things? And it is going to be in Bugasera, if I'm not mistaken, in, ya in uh, Nyamata, I think. So um, this is uh, something that I promote. I talk about with Israeli investors and they come. And this is very good. Um, as I said, we are trying to help in the issue of health. Uh, to boost the health system. I'm doing it together with my friend um, uh, from the president's office, um, uh, Fiseha um, uh, Senait. She's the advisor of the president on health issues. And also she's the representative of Suzanne uh, uh, Buffett Foundation. And we have collaborated now and we are going to send very soon um, six uh, managers general managers of hospitals here for a course on hospital management in Israel. They were supposed to leave in the middle of August, but it was postponed. I hope it will take place in October. Okay. Uh, you recently said, it's also quoted, that you Israel will take Rwandans to the moon. I don't know if you <laughs> <laughs> remember that. Yes, you, of course. Uh, what did you mean? So, no, no, it's not <laughs> taking to the moon, it's a headline. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a, it was supposed to be a competition of schools yeah. uh, around this year, uh, during 21, because we are sending, or, I, again, it's a private sector issue, but the Israel is going to send another, to launch, well, there are two things. First of all, another satellite to the moon. And then also Israeli astronaut is going to join uh, a NASA program of, of another satellite, another um, satellite, another uh, um, project, not to the moon, but to, the s to space. And so the suggestion was that oh, there will be a competition among schools to pick the, an experiment that the children will propose of how, what kind of a thing you can do in space without gravity, it can be in physics, in biology, in whatever, chemistry. The sky is the limit, uh, space is the, is the limit. Uh, but um, for now, it's, uh, there was no, uh, not enough fund, fund, fund uh, founded for that, but I still hope, I still, uh, I'm still optimistic. Yeah, Rwanda recently launched the Rwanda Space Agency. Yes. Uh, do you have any 
of cooperation? Course. Of course, yeah. of course. In which way? In every way. Yeah. I mean, there is a collaboration, there are, there are uh, a constant in interaction between the Israeli Space Agency and the, uh, the agency here. And uh, we also have a good, good collaboration between the Rwandan uh, Cyber Security Agency and the Israeli one. Yeah. Uh, Rwanda and Israel uh, share the tragic history of genocide. Um, we know that in the process of genocide there is uh, the last step of denial. Rwanda is actually encountering a lot of it recently, in the recent years. We yeah, are pretty sure that Israel also passed through that period. What advice can you give Rwanda as a country which has gone through the same uh, you know, tragedy and the same process? How can Rwanda deal with the denialism which is growing? Yes. Uh, actually, when you talk about denial, it started before the end of genocide. It started uh, many years before. Uh, it was actually going on, it go, went on during the period be before genocide and during genocide, and it was the preparation to deny it as, as, as it was done. And of course, now it's still going on. So, yes, in our case, it's a bit different because, yes, there was a Holocaust denial, but it's getting less and less uh, effective. Mm. And what I do suggest, and I do it, is, is um, I talk about uh, the need to remember, the need to talk, the need to share your story. Yeah. And in Israel we print about 200 books a year about the Holocaust still. Um, there need to be more sharing of each individual story and uh, need to be more uh, people who talk about their experience, even make videos or, or some kind of a radio talk, if not writing. Uh. Writing, stay forever. That's what should be done. And this is, this is to prevent denial. Of course, it is also to heal, and one, to, to talk to the second generation. They should know of what, going, what went on here mm -hmm. in order to prevent the next genocide in the world. Yeah. But also, of course, uh, to prevent denial because you cannot prevent denial if you don't share your story. It's very simple. Yeah. It's yeah. very simple. Yeah. So the, the strong ones who did the, the genocide, who are still around, mm -hmm. they can say nothing happened, of course. And then if no one says anything from the other side, mm. then uh, it stays with this uh, narrative. Yeah. It's very simple. You need mm. just to air it, to yeah. talk about it, to share uh, in many, many ways as possible. So one of the programs that we did is with the youth. Mm. Uh, it was an Israeli organization that I encouraged them to come. And they, uh, they did a very nice project with uh, students from Mount Kenya University mm. uh, to the, some groups were formed and each group prepared a story of, on video yeah. uh, which uh, described in, in motion yeah. exactly what happened yeah. Yeah. Uh, to them. No, maybe not to them, but to their parents yeah. or as a child they remember. So yeah. it is a very important project. Yeah. And we are doing it on, still on, uh, on, uh, gen on the Holocaust survivors. My mother is, was a Holocaust survivor yeah. uh, when she was nine. She was taken to a concentration camp, and she remembers, and she gave her testimony on video. Mm. Uh, it's a project that um, Steven Spielberg is doing in the Los Angeles, and finance everything, and it's a good project. Uh, lastly, uh, let's talk about your personal life in Rwanda. You've been in Rwanda for this long. I mean, how have you enjoyed the country, if I can say that? I have been everywhere almost, and uh, I still have a few places to go. But both as a tourist and also for work, I um, I know very well the country. I think this is my job. I have to. This is what we are trying to do. We are trying to be very everywhere, to know everyone, and to um, when when there is a need to make a difference or an impact, it is easier to do when you are know places and you know people. Finally, as we conclude, we know that Israel and Palestine have had problems for so long. Many people here don't actually even understand what's going on. So I would like to ask you in brief, what do you think will be the long-term solution 
for this program? Well, um, me, I've been, yes, I've been many years in the ministry. I've, actually, my, the first part of my career was on, on the peace process. And I was working with Shimon Peres, who was the peace who was the man behind peace with Palestinians. It was exciting times. Um, and so, of course, the solution must come, uh, but both sides need to work on it. There are two narratives and there are two, I uh, would say, in equal, uh, it's, it's in equal terms, you, you have to give up and they have to give up. And unfortunately now, is there's no partner because Hamas took over, this is an extreme movement of Gaza, in Gaza, and if there will be elections in West Bank, it might happen in West Bank. And if Hamas takes over, then uh, there is no one to talk to about peace, because their goal is to destroy Israel. So we go back instead of going forward. And um, so what we can do is to help Palestinians to uh, boost their economy, we help them in economic growth, in agriculture, in the West Bank. We let Palestinians work in Israel. They are building their cities. And with the West Bank, it's quite, it's a good, good situation, more or less. Of course, there is things that need to be solved. But the um, situation with the West Bank is fine. There was a meeting two days ago between the Minister of Defense and uh, Abu Mazen, the head of the Palestinian Authority. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. We look for ways to help.